Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. Of course, you read the title, you know we're doing the predictions, but I also want to talk a little bit about Team Kangarna and how we've been competing in the pit and we're also in Contenders Trials. So if you don't know, I am actually the team owner of Kangarna. I am the original founder and was a player for the team for a while, but I have moved on to different things and I am now the owner of the team. Today we competed in the Overwatch pit and instead of playing Overwatch League footage, I'm going to go ahead and play the Kangarna footage today where we faced off against No Clout. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and follow the team Kangarna Twitter down below you can get live updates to when we're playing we're also in contenders trials looking to get into contenders our Twitter handler is at team underscore Kangarna I will also link it down below so go follow for those live updates also I'm playing the VOD in the background so if you like that go ahead and check out our games but let's go ahead and get into it of course it is Tuesday and the overwatch league is starting back up tomorrow so I am extremely hyped for that now what's actually very interesting about stage 2 week 1 is it is the exact same matchups as from stage 1 week 5. So we're going to be seeing back to back matchups, which I think is pretty cool. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's exciting and awesome that we get to see fast rematches? Or do you think that the Overwatch League should spread them out a little bit? Regardless though, we have some awesome matches coming up this week. And I'm so happy that the Overwatch League is back. If you guys are happy that they're back, be sure to drop a subscription to my channel. Because you can catch up on daily Overwatch League news, stats, predictions, and basically any Overwatch content in general you can find here on my channel. So don't be afraid. Drop that subscription. Join the community. We have a great family here. Get involved in the comments, guys, and let's go ahead and hop into the predictions for Stage 2, Week 1. Starting off with the first match, we have Soul Dynasty going up against the Los Angeles Valiant. In Week 5, the Valiant won 3-0, but I think it's going to be different this time. With a new meta coming into play, the Soul Dynasty will have the edge in this matchup, taking it either 3-1 or 4-0. Of course, the Los Angeles Valiant are a strong team as well, but I think because this new meta favors Soul Dynasty so much, they will take this match. Moving on to the second game, we have Dallas Fuel taking on Shanghai Dragons, where the Dallas Fuel won 3-2. It was a very close game, but I don't think this one will be as close. I think Dallas Fuel take it either 4-0 or 3-1. They've added some really good players to their roster, AKM, Rascal, and I don't think they're done yet. I think they will get another good main tank. We'll just have to see. Today is the last day for signings. Hopefully some big news comes out for some of the teams, because I'm excited for that. Moving on to the third game of the day, we have the Los Angeles Gladiators taking on the San Francisco Shock. The Gladiators won this one 3-1 in week 5, but we are moving on to a new meta, so some things are going to change. This matchup will not be the same. The Los Angeles Gladiators did add Fisher, which will give them a boost in this match, but then we're moving into a meta that favors the San Francisco Shock a lot. So this match is going to be a toss-up to me. I think it's going to be 3-2 either way. If I have to pick one, though... I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles Gladiators. I'm expecting a game five, and I wouldn't be surprised if San Francisco won it either. Moving on to Thursday, starting off with the Houston Outlaws and London Spitfire. Now, I know you guys keep telling me, Michael, they didn't 4-0 London. Houston didn't 4-0 London. They 3-1 them. I know, I keep saying 4-0. It's a habit I have. The game was very in favor of the Houston Outlaws. They were up 3-0, and they basically swept them and won the set. So I always want to say 4-0, but obviously there's that last match, and that made it 3-1. It's just a simple mistake on my part, because when I think of the game, I just remember Houston Outlaws completely dominating the London Spitfire. But back to my prediction, I think the London Spitfire will take it this time. I think they fixed their issues against the Houston Outlaws in their playoff game, and I don't see any reason why they won't have them fixed in this match either. 3-1 or 4-0 for London. Moving on to New York Excelsior and Florida Mayhem. New York Excelsior are just the straight up better team. Even with the new signings for Florida Mayhem, I don't think it'll do much against the New York Excelsior. Maybe they can get a map this time. They were able to get a draw last time they played, but New York Excelsior 4-0, 3-1. Moving on to the third game of Thursday, we have the Boston Uprising against the Philadelphia Fusion. The Super Bowl rematch. And in stage one, the Boston Uprising took this 4-0, very dominant win. And I don't see any reason why it won't be another dominant victory for Boston. They have just looked very good. The meta shift can change a lot though. But I don't think the meta shift favors the Philadelphia Fusion. They're going to have to rework everything out. And they were looking very inconsistent and sloppy on the old meta. So Boston Uprising 3-1. Moving on to Friday, we have the London Spitfire taking on the New York Excelsior. We remember this match, it was an epic 3-2 victory for the New York Excelsior. Obviously, they played again in the finals, 
where the London Spitfire reverse swept them and won 3 to 2. So two 3-2 matches. This was probably the two closest games I saw in my life. We did a video on these matches and we looked at the statistics. They were literally decided by like six kills and two team fights combined, which is absolutely absurd. I couldn't believe how close these games were. So it's really anybody's for the taking. Whoever adapts to the meta quicker is going to take this match. It is a hard prediction to make, but of course I got to go with my boys London Spitfire. They did win in the finals when it mattered. And moving to the next meta, they might be just a little bit more flexible than the New York Excelsior. This is a hard game to predict though. Moving on to the next match, we have the Dallas Fuel, the Los Angeles Gladiators. This one went in the favor of the Dallas Fuel 3-1. They looked pretty good in this set. I was proud of the Dallas Fuel of how they performed in this set, and I don't see why they won't be able to beat the Gladiators again with their new additions. The Gladiators do have Fisher now, but I think Rascal will be more effective for the Dallas Fuel than Fisher will for the Gladiators. I also think the meta shift favors the Dallas Fuel a lot more than the Gladiators. It might help the Gladiators a bit, but Dallas Fuel are one of those teams in the league that are going to benefit the most off of it just because they do need a change. And they also have players on their roster that are good at the heroes coming into the meta. So it's going to be exciting seeing how the Dallas Fuel stack up, and this will be a good match. Same result, 3-1 for the Dallas Fuel. And the next match, it's San Francisco Shock going up against Seoul Dynasty. And I said in my last video, I think both these teams will improve by the meta changes. I think these two teams, along with the Dallas Fuel, are going to be the three that improve the most from this meta. They both have players on their teams who are better at like Reinhardt, Roadhog, Tanks, Lucio, Anna, and stuff. So it's a tough one to call. Since the San Francisco Shock did get two maps against Soul Dynasty in week five, I want to say they'll be able to at least get one map against Soul Dynasty, but one tops. I think Soul Dynasty takes it 3-1 or 4-0. Moving on to Saturday, the very last day, we have the Philadelphia Fusion going up against Florida Mayhem. Philadelphia Fusion did take this in a 3-2 victory in the Stage 1 closer, and it was very close. Florida Mayhem looked a lot better in this set than many of the other ones they've played, and with the additions to their roster, I think they might be able to swing this match into their favor. Because, like I said earlier, the Philadelphia Fusion, I don't think they're going to adapt to this meta as well as other teams. And Florida Mayhem do have some good additions coming in. So this is definitely going to be another close match like their last one. I do think that the Florida Mayhem have a good shot at winning this one though. Philadelphia, in my opinion, really is going to struggle coming into this new meta. Like I said, they were very sloppy in stage one. And with a whole bunch of changes coming in, they're going to be even more sloppy. Florida Mayhem are also going to have a boost because of new players. Not even just because these players are good, but simply because they have a new atmosphere. They have a new mentality going into the stage too. They can now sit here and think, all right, we're an even playing field to some of these other teams. Our coaching staff is stronger. We have more players on our roster. We're more flexible. We could just do a lot more things in general. So I think because of all these factors, the Florida Mayhem are going to be able to take this match either 3-2 or 3-1. Now, I don't think the Florida Mayhem are going to be gods or anything in stage two, but against the Philadelphia Fusion in this match, I think they do have that edge. Now moving on to Boston Uprising and the Houston Outlaws, a rematch to that epic series we saw to decide who would move on to the Stage 1 playoffs, and my god was it amazing to watch, one of the best of Stage 1 by far. And this is a tough one for me to predict, it was really hard for me to predict that match, I did go with the Boston Uprising 3-2, of course I was wrong though, Houston Outlaws did come out on top. I don't know if Boston was affected going into that game 5 since they knew they were out of the playoff run and that made them perform a little less. That could have been a factor for them and a reason why the Houston Outlaws did take that last map. And in general, the Boston Uprising have looked great on game 5 so far and Houston Outlaws struggled on them. Because of all this, I just go back and forth every single time. I think Boston's going to win and then I think about something from Houston and it's just like, oh my god, both these teams are so close. Neck and neck, who's going to win? They're clearly the two best Western teams right now as well, so bragging rights do come along with this match. And with the new meta coming into play, both these teams I think might struggle a little bit early on. I think after week one, both these teams will be strong on the new meta, but there's going to be that small period where they're not very good, and I think it might be a very sloppy match, and it's going to go to a game five, and who will win is going to be the Houston Outlaws 3-2 once again. 
Wait, no, 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 no. It's not going to be the Houston Outlaws. We're going to go with the Boston Uprising off of one reason alone. I think the Boston Uprising want revenge. I think they're going to be focused more for this match, and they're going to try much, much harder than the Houston Outlaws. Of course, the Houston Outlaws are going to try in this match. I'm not saying they won't. Everybody's going to be trying. Obviously, it's an Overwatch League match, but the Boston Uprising are hungry for this one. They want that rematch. They want vengeance, and they will win this 3-2. And let's go ahead and move on to the last match. We have the Shanghai Dragons and the Los Angeles Valiant. The Los Angeles Valiant looked very good in Week 5. And I know I picked them to lose against Soul Dynasty. But I really do think Soul Dynasty is going to get a huge boost going into this new meta. And I think with the Stage 1, Stage 2 break, they're going to be a much improved team. They've been working hard. They were most definitely not happy with their performance in the last stage. So that's why I picked them against Los Angeles. I do think the Valiant will win against Shanghai. It'll probably be a 4-0 victory. There are rumors that Shanghai Dragons new players won't even be able to play until later in the season. So I'm definitely going with the Valiant 4-0. And that's it for my picks, guys. I try to do these and give small insight and get through each game pretty quickly so it's not too long of a video. Let me know what you guys think about that. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a subscription. Like the video, I do Overwatch League content every single day. You can follow all my social medias, add me on Snapchat, join the Discord, and I'm out of here, guys. Peace.